All right, peeps, welcome to the Culture and People cast. Victoria, in a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Thank you, Anna, for having me on your show. Okay. Um, I am currently in transition. I've been in the corporate relocation um, side of doing business. I was a senior client services consultant for a relocation company, working on site for a major corporation for the last 14 years. So um, I've had also some background in human resources working for um, an insurance company um, some years ago. So a little bit of everything that encompasses maybe um, HR today. Yeah, this is great though, because I think the guests that I have on here are business owners, they're people leaders, they work in HR, they work not in HR. If you care about people in corporate, uh, you know, organizational culture, let's have a conversation because I believe that's part of the mission is everybody has something to say about this, right? Exactly. So I appreciate exactly. you being a guest today. So I'm hearing, you know, from other leaders uh, in the in the culture and people space and engaging employees is a challenge. What are your thoughts? That's a topic of discussion that I've been having a lot lately with different groups that I'm in. Um, funny, I belong to a book club um, and we're currently reading a book by Bob Captain calls called Everybody Matters and it's about his leadership style. And I'm just fascinated by it because of the time and care and effort that he has taken um, to make everyone within their companies matter, every single person and the decisions that they make. Um, he makes a comment about um, about 88% of people today are unhappy in their jobs um, and that leadership is in a crisis. Um, I really do believe that. Um, people, you know, based on my own experience, um, friends that I have, others that I talk to, um, there's a lot of dissatisfaction um, in the workplace. And some of that um, is due to company structure, company culture. Um, some of the things that I attribute that to are that right now a lot of people are doing more work with fewer employees. It seems to have been that trend for several years now, where the companies are cutting back or whether they're growing but not hiring. So you've got employees doing more work, basically, um, and kind of stretched to the max, um, which of course puts stress on them. Um, you know, we're at work more hours than we are at home. Um, so taking that home, coming back the next day, um, there really isn't a lot of joy, you know, and, and, and not for everyone, I'm not saying for everyone, but just kind of overall, it just seems that everyone that I hear from is doing more work, you know, and complaining that they're not hiring enough. Yeah. You know, I think the other thing that I find interesting is right now we've got like four generations of workers out there, you know, you've got your baby boomers, you've got your Gen Xers, you've got your millennials, you've got your Gen Zs. And I think it's a fascinating time um, but building cultures, companies are not necessarily bringing all of those groups together. Mm -hmm. I think everybody kind of feels territorial. Um, baby boomers, you know, uh, they've worked for so long, they've been loyal to companies, you know, they're, they're afraid of being just basically let go at the last minute, okay? Um, you've got the young folks who are coming in from college and don't really see a lot of opportunities, or if they do, they can't wait for the next folks above them, you know, to, you know, get out of the way so that they can basically move up the ladder. And I really wish that companies would bring these groups more, you know, together more. Um, I would love to learn from the younger folks. I'm not as technically advanced on a lot of new things that keep coming up. I just finally got Zoom down um, and a few other platforms. Um, but then also um, the younger generation can learn from, you know, some of the older um, generations. So before we take that experience and wisdom with us, and you have to kind of reinvent the wheel, it would be nice if company culture kind of brought these groups together a lot more. And I do see that lacking sometimes. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I love the idea of the generational sharing. Now is the, the, the time to sort of uh, capture any additional wisdom that that generation has as they're leaving, which can teach. And why wouldn't we want to fuel them back so that their next step, whatever that next step is for the boomers, is a really great one. Yeah, so I'm curious, exactly. tactically speaking, Victoria, having worked in organizations so long, what advice do you have for organizations who want to advance their people's strategy or to evolve their culture? Well, especially now when companies um, have been downsizing, furloughing, you know, due to the bad pandemic and um, especially for the larger companies, it's sad that some smaller companies have basically had to close their doors. But for some of the larger companies, um, this is a time to kind of reevaluate their position. Um, culture basically, you know, um, it doesn't necessarily just start from the top up, top down, you know, it also starts from the bottom up. 
Um, and, I, and I think that one of the things I always say is that a manager is not always a leader. Um, so sometimes kind of reevaluate who you have in management positions, because those, those are the people who literally are the bridge between leadership and the workforce. Um, and, and you've got to have someone there who's wanting to support um, their team, but also bring to their team um, the vision of leadership. Um, you know, because there's a lot of layers between me and the CEO of a company, you know, and, you know, it'd be nice if he knew my name, you know, or things like that, but the bigger you are, you know, the further the distance is. Um, so I think companies really have got to work on um, getting their vision out and, and getting that buy-in, which is something that I appreciated um, Bob Chapman doing um, and his vision um, was really listening to employees. Um, the workforce really needs to have a say um, about what they do on a daily basis, what the decisions that com uh, executives are making and the impact that that makes on their day-to-day -day, um, processes of doing the jobs. Um, I know that that was a big frustration for me um, as a consultant. Um, other people would come up with this new process and sometimes, you know, I'd be like, well, you have never even been a consultant. You know, um, and so now I've got to figure out the way to do this along with all of my other many duties and challenges. Um, so it's it's really about listening um, to your workforce and getting the right managers there. Don't just promote people because maybe they produce numbers. Everybody is not a people person. And um, you want that manager to eventually hopefully become a leader further up, you know, the road and bring those underneath them, move them up. I don't think there's enough um, training um, to move people up and sometimes managers are just, okay, here's the job, you know, um, for whatever reason, and, and sometimes it's not the best fit. Yeah, I agree. You know, and, and one thing I loved in, in my takeaway from that it, it, advice, so I can, you know, sort of boil that down for everybody is you, you've got to provide access to the leaders. And then once you have that access, the leaders have to listen and let them be part of it. I, can't, I couldn't agree more. You know, I think that's why story, storytelling is such a an important skill now. It's like one of the top soft skills of 2020 is because we don't tell enough stories and we don't let people be enough a part of it. You know, do you ever do that where you're, I'll say a sentence, then you say a sentence and someone else's sentence, we tell the story in a round robin. Like that's really how it should be. That round robin storytelling of building together. Yeah, I love exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. I think that that um, would help, you know, employees, you know, can understand and they can accept um, you know, business acumen and business decisions if they feel like they're a part of it, if they feel that they're being heard. And I think what leadership would find out is that employees want to do a good job. You know, everybody wants to succeed, mm -hmm. not only personally, but for the company to keep their job. You know, and if you have those discussions and those interactions, you'd be surprised at how hard people will work for you. I mean, I know I had personal people in my company who, I would never want to disappoint them. And one of them was the senior VP GM who I did get a chance to know. And even today, we keep up with each other, you know, and I just never wanted to disappoint him, you know, um, he meant that much to me. Um, so I, I just think that if companies, you know, learn, you know, again, to, to bring everybody in, you can't please everybody, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but I think if there's clear communication, those who really want to do a good job will work for you and will help the company, you know, hopefully achieve its goals. And those who don't, then sometimes the decision has to be made that this maybe isn't the right position for them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just, just move on, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, Victoria. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts around this. I think there's some really good takeaways that we can make, especially around that storytelling and sharing the this, this space with other people. So, all right, listeners, we're sending you peace and progress. Victoria, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.